Um, make sure you have your notepads ready. Hello, Zoom world. Hope everyone's doing awesome, ready for a fantastic uh, day building your business. Um, today, we're going to go over the fast start, and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, it's actually one of my favorite things to train on because, in, in my opinion, it's one of the most important things in our business, in our system. Uh, so I get really kind of really excited about doing them and then training on them to make sure we get the, you know, uh, the max effect from them. So do me a favor. Um, let me, uh, I would like this to be interactive. I know we've got live training here. We've got some people on Zoom. Sabina, you, or uh, Joe, are you helping me out with, with the interactions on Zoom or is that Delia? Delia, yes. Okay, awesome. So just let me know if somebody has a question or a thought and uh, I want to do my best to make it interactive. Uh, I'm not going to be going through the fast start. I'm not doing a fast start today. Uh, we won't have time, but two, I want to be able to hone in on some parts of the fast start planner that I think are the most important that will make you have a successful fast start. And um, so a lot of it we might rush through, and some of it we might park and sit there for five, eight, seven, ten minutes. Is that cool? If I go with that, All right? So um, what is a fast start? I think I've got a speaker in here, so it should pick up um, um, thoughts from the crowd, the live crowd here. What is a fast start? Later. Something that's going to determine how your recruits' uh, 30 days is going to go. So, uh, Leda says something that determines how your recruits' first 30 days is going to go. Absolutely right. What else? What is a fast start? What else? Add on to that. <clears throat> Hope your recruit really gets some orientation on what's next. Hey, you just made the decision to start. This is what you have to do next. Next step, right? Get, let they leave. They know what's next for them. I think that's great. Anybody else want to have anything to say? Yeah. Getting appointments set. Yeah. Expectations. Expectations, uh, expectations for both parties, right? The recruiter and the person that just started. Uh, all those are absolutely right, right? Um, that's such, and, and I'll just reiterate, that's such a powerful thing because if you think about it, they just, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Remember when you just joined, you just paid $124. You're excited, but you're not exactly sure why you're excited. You know, there's opportunity, but what are you going to be doing? You don't have this problem when people start asking questions about what you're doing. You don't have the answers to those yet, but you're still excited. That's the mode you're in right now, right? And you need some direction. You need some clarity. You need some expectations. You want to know what the next step is. You want to maximize your first 30 days. So um, that's perfect. So here's three things to make sure you start and set yourself up to have the best fast start. Some of, some of y'all might go, oh, these are, I know these. These are, these are easy. I know these. Um, but it's crazy how many times I see people ignore these three or kind of kind of cut corners on these three and miss out on having a truly successful fast start. So uh, before I give you these three, think about the timeline. Think about the importance. Think about the time. Like you just, someone just spent $124 or invest $124 and start their business. And now you're sitting and now you're trying to get back in the door with them. So the life of a recruit What's more important, getting a name and number or doing the fast start planner? Fast start, why? That's going to get more numbers. Gives me more names and numbers. What else? Get your recruit moving. Get my recruit moving. That person's further down the list. What am I really, and this is kind of goes to my first point here, mindset wise. What am I really looking for when I'm doing Primerica? What am I looking for every day? RVPs, studs, champions. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for people that eventually, remember, go back to like the original thought of why you love Primary Care. It's similar to mine. I want to be somewhere else still making money. Certification. Right? That, that's what I came here for. That's what I came here after about, I don't know, 25, 30 days of a couple trainings, a couple field trainings, a couple orientations. I was like, wait a second. Like the real opportunity here is someday I'm not here and bank account still has money coming in. Like, does everyone agree with that? That's, yeah, yeah. I think, why we all came here and there's nothing wrong with that thought. So track back, how do I get there is I have to have independent agents on my team, people that know how to do business. So I take a high priority in, in somebody getting closer to becoming an independent agent yeah. than somebody further away. 
a name and number. Could that person, I mean, at one point, Brian Sadbury's number was just on a list or a piece of paper or a text message or a inbox. Like at one point, that's all it was, was a name and number. Yeah. Now it's a near-term RVP, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But at one point it was just a name and number. But I put a, I put a level of an importance the closer somebody gets to RVP, right? right? So why, why are you saying all that? It sounds like that, obviously. It's interesting to me when I see somebody, they're supposed to have a fast start and they cut it short because they have an interview in the lobby. Yeah. yeah. Does that kind of make mm -hmm. sense? They cut it short. Well, I have an interview here. I'm like, what are you going to do with that interview? Well, I'm going to try to hire them. Okay, and then what? Well, then I'm going to try to get them off to a fast start. Like, okay, we, you got somebody already there <laughs> right now. They're in front of you. Don't, don't make the mistake of cutting your fast start short. So the, one of the first of the three points is allow yourself proper amount of time to do a fast start. Make sure that that, that new recruit has allocated enough time in their schedule and make sure that you've allocated enough time to have a proper fast start. And uh, as much as I would love fast starts to be 30 minutes and uh, after 30 minutes, you know, I've successfully went over their goals, built a great relationship. We have seven KT set and the whole list is filled out. Does that ever happen for anybody? Does anybody have successful 30 minute fast starts? No. Right? It doesn't happen. It's not going to work. I would even, I would even venture to say it's not even after an hour. <laughs> right. So I would start minimum with a fast start, allowing yourself an hour and a half to do a fast start before your next uh, obligation. And same thing for them. Hey, why don't you come to the office? You know, we got to get you get off your fast start. You know, coming here for 45 minutes, an hour or so. Don't say that because as you'll see here in a second, what I'm going to be talking about, the fast start takes a build-up process to get to the shabam at the end that you want to, you can't just walk in and go, hey, let's set 12 KTs right now. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm ready. I actually have one on the phone right now. Here. <laughs> like that's not how it's set. You, you have to, it's got to be built up. And if you spend 45 minutes of doing proper build-up and then they go, Hey, I got to run. That was, I know that felt like you got something done. That was a waste of time. Yeah. Does that make sense? I know it felt like they were pumped up and I was pumped up. I didn't get paid off of people being pumped up one time. I got paid off of people successfully helping clients. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Right. There's been so much wasted pumped upness in my <laughs> life. I've seen so many people waste wow. their pumped upness on nothing. Right. So we, if we're going to get people pumped up, we're going to take action. With that pumped upness, is that fair? Yeah. Right. So we got to make sure we allocate enough time. Um, the set, the the second point is make, put yourself in a box with your new recruit, right? Uh, figuratively, right? <laughs> uh, in an office, make sure you it's just you and them. You know, hey, want me to do a fast start here in the overview? Um, Y'all can go over here and hang out. Don't worry about me. I'll be over here doing my fast start. I don't know. I, I just don't see that working if I've got somebody else in there. I need to get. I need to get somewhat intimate with this person. I need to like connect with them. I need to not just talk about their goals. I need to talk about their goals. Like, yeah. I, you know, there's been a lot of fast starts where people teared up in the fast start. This is like, it's the first time that somebody's ever asked them what they really want to accomplish in life and sat there and spent 10 minutes listening. Like, you'd be surprised. It's like, you just be careful when you do a fast start. People are ready to like, man, thank God somebody's asking me about me. You know what I mean? So um, I don't, it's hard to do that like in the, in the training though. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah. That person might be giving you answers. You think you're giving somewhere, but they've got their radar on. They know there's four other people here and there's somebody doing that. Someone keeps coming in the office. And all. I, you know, so put yourself in a box. Is that fair? And if there's space is used up, space is filled up, um, take them to coffee somewhere. You can do a fast start. I've done so many fast starts over lunch, so many fast starts uh, at Starbucks or whatever. You know, so make sure you have yourself in a box. So best time to do a fast start. Now, you can't always hit this because, remember, the rule in doing a fast start is you want to do it within the first 48 hours, right? I would not do it the same day that you recruited them. Yeah. All right. Anybody thoughts on why? It's too much. Too much information. Too much information. You, want, you do want to recruit them that first day or the second day that you recruit them, but you don't want to roll that right into a fast start. Now, month end. The relationship's good. They already have two friends in the business and they're the third one to come in. I guess you, there's exceptions to that rule sometimes, but normally you want to make sure that fast start is on another day. So that information, from that first IBA one-on-one -on -one can sink in first and don't overwhelm them, right? 
Um, so put, put yourself, uh, allow for enough time, put yourself in a box. Um, and remember it starts, the, the third is it starts with a good five start starts with the right mindset. I had something I wanted to say, but I'm gonna hold off on it. Um, starts with the right mindset. You have to go into this fast start having the right mindset. So um, individuals that we would say, when do I start doing my, my own fast starts? It's whenever you are confident in your belief in Primerica and your belief in the system is at an all time high. You believe Primerica is it and you believe our system is it, you can do fast starts. You notice I did, I left out your belief in yourself, right? You don't necessarily have to have an all time belief in yourself yet. But if you really truly believe in the system and you believe in Primerica, you can do a successful fast start. Now, my hope would be that your belief in yourself is coming along, right? But some people, um, and this is natural, think that they can't sell somebody else on something or they can't lead somebody else on something that they haven't accomplished quite yet. You sure as heck can. You sure as heck can. As long as you're on track to that thing, you can bring people with you along the way, right? Now, does it help to, to arrive at somewhere first? Before? Yes. I mean, fast starts now. You can pop your ring out. You've got a couple diamonds in there. I mean, it, it does make it a little easier, right? Uh, but you don't have to 100% have full belief in yourself yet. As long as you have belief in Primerica and belief in our system, you're, you're good. You're ready to go, right? So uh, any questions before, before we kind of dive in with the prep work, which I think is super important? Any thoughts, add, add-ons, VPs? Good, perfect. Okay, so um, let's let's dive in here. All right, so I you know you can print this out if you're doing it on Zoom. Oh, that's another thing I was gonna say. If you can, I know Zoom World has become such a great tool for us in the last couple of years. If you can, I would do the fast start live. What, what I've noticed is interviews work pretty good. You can get an IBA pretty easily on Zoom. You can close business on Zoom. Client interactions are great over Zoom. Fast starts, I think there, there starts to become this drop off on, on effectiveness when it comes to trying to do this on Zoom. I really believe that I'm getting the proper nods I'm looking for from my Zoom, Zoom people. <laughs> They're saying, yes, yes. So you make sure if you're going to get to the fast start part of, of the system, try to get them live. Great time to get them here live too. Great time to have them in the office. Feel the energy of our office. Forget. Don't forget, those of you that are veterans here, how awesome our office energy is. We get used to it because we see it every day, right? But you don't, you don't remember, like they're used to walking into a job every day, being told what to do, not really liking it, not really friends with anybody, just trying to get a paycheck, or walking into the school every day, not knowing if this is really what they want to do or if somebody else plants this idea in their mind that they need to do this, not sure if the 60, 80, 100 grand is going to actually pay it off. Like, or doing nothing, like they're they're used to probably not a very positive experience. And now you're going to invite them in here, right? So sell the heck out of them coming in and meeting meeting your peers, meeting a couple of VPs, and then they walk into the fast start. How cool would that be? They come in for a fast start. Brian's heating up his lunch, right? You know, and, hey, this is Brian Stever. Oh, oh, hey, you know, hey, this guy's in fifteen. Him and his wife are fifteen thousand personal production. He's gonna make twenty five grand this month. He's, he's not even 30 years old yet, you know? Wow. Hey, come on, let's go do your fast start. It's like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? You get to have some interaction, you know? So um, so let's let's jump in. All right. If you're live, I'm going to kind of pretend like you're uh, you're live. Uh, am I right on those numbers? Where, where are you at right now? All right, good. All right. Is that right, 15? Uh, yeah. 12, 12 personal. 12 personal? 15. And it's, what, seven and five, seven? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Um, so, so the ring's on there. Bam, printed it out. We're getting a new printer. I know what you're thinking. Uh, what printer? <laughs> Did you buy it today, Christina? I tease. Yeah, okay. She got one today. That was a good printer. RIP on that guy. I mean, yeah. that was a solid dude. I think he still works. If uh, you don't use Apple, is that right? So maybe we can. <laughs> it's done. It's gone. It's yeah. um, okay, so first page, this page, I kind of would like you, uh, first page, whoever's clicking for it. Is that you, Christine? Um, 
this page, and I'm hopefully on Zoom, hopefully you can kind of zoom in and, and read it a little bit. Uh, but this page, I want to give the new recruit an overview of why we're doing this meeting. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, they just got started. They should have just paid their IBA yesterday or the day before. Like, it's like within the last two, three days, they paid their IBA and they're here with me, right? So I'm walking through this stuff and I'm going over what the next step is, right? I'm, 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 I'm either just kind of reading it with them. Getting, I want to get them pumped up about what they're, what's, what's happening. Right. Yeah. You know, so I, I want them to first understand this is a business, not a job, not a job yeah. right? It, you want, that's the first thing I want them to understand. This is a business, not a job. Um, every business needs two things, staff, customers. Our job is to help you build a team. There's a couple things. This is, I want to spend some time here. Like I'm going, if you follow our system, you will be able to accomplish your goals. If you follow our system, right? Yeah. There's a couple of things during the fast start that I'm trying to accomplish. One of them is tying down the new recruit because I know that they are going to fail me. They're gonna fail in their first two weeks. They're gonna slip up. I know it, I know it. So I wanna set them up. I wanna set them up that if, if they follow the system with me, they're gonna get results. I don't want them going, hey, it's been a month. What happened to all that? grandioso like uh you know sprint bonus i like I, I know that if you follow the system you know remember grandma needed 15 rides last week you know what i mean like you, you remember you didn't come in you said we we're going to do kt's every wednesday night remember that was going to be our night for field training we didn't do that at all like if, let's try it again though let's do it again you know yeah so as a trainer just have a lot of forgiveness and a lot of uh have a heart of Christy and I were talking about this. Like, have a heart where your expectation you're ready for somebody to do everything you say, but you're also your expectation is ready for them not to. Yeah. Frustration comes when your expectation is here and people perform here, right? So, so yeah, well, you don't really expect anybody to win here. No, I expect everyone to win and I'm throwing a big bait, but when they don't, I want to allow for margin for me not to be frustrated with them because that is. America, everyone I, everyone comes in and they go first step they fail <laughs> right you know what I mean so be ready be ready for that right uh, you'll be licensed but you, you want to cap you want to set a tone be licensed for 30 days may have two to three people that's our goal is to build a team for you right uh, be able to make two to three grand once you're licensed right um, I love this as we go through this game plan I want you to look at this as the trainer not the trainee I'm already Casting a vision for them. And you're, you're not just an agent walking around. My goal is that you eventually are an RVP, that you're a trainer here, right? So I want you to kind of look at that through that set of lenses, right? So um, so when you're starting your fast start, you want to take this information and you want to make it in your own words, yeah. right? This is the plan. Here's the plan. Here's the game plan for us. First of all, you're, this is a business, not a job. Right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to recruit some people. We're gonna have to find some clients. I'm gonna help you with that. We're gonna build a team, right? I'm gonna help you get licensed. That's gonna happen in the first 30 days. So you're you're kind of casting a vision for them, and then you're ending it on. You can scroll down, you know. You're ending it on on a on a scale of one to ten. You do your little spill. Make sure it's not too long, right? On a, on, a, on a scale of one to ten, ten being the highest. How motivated are you to make this happen? Ten, nine, eight, ten, whatever. Awesome, perfect. Let's let's dive in. So you just want to start off just like that. And this next page, this next page is the most yeah. important page of the fast start. All right, the the most important page of the fast start. Any questions on the first page? All right. So next page, you're jumping in. It's the most important. You got your schedule that you're up here and their goals. Okay. Thought as the person doing the fast start. Remember, weak people need to be told what to do. Strong people want to be told what to do. All right. <clears throat> this schedule works if you, as the trainer, are following a schedule. All right. There's a lot of gold in that statement to unpack. If you, as the trainer, do not have a schedule and you're trying to put all your new recruits on a schedule and you don't have one, 
there is zero accountability that you're giving them. You're not asking them, hey, remember we still didn't have KT spent? Where were they? You don't even have in your schedule. <laughs> you don't even know to call to follow. You, you forgot y'all had this conversation two weeks ago. Does that make sense? So when the schedule really works is, in, is when, when you're following on yourself and when they fail, you can keep them accountable to that with grace and, and kindness. But hey, remember what we talked about? You said you're going to work eight to 10 hours a week. We said we're going to be super part-time, eight to 10 hours a week. Uh, when you were, at, you were training Wednesday night, you're on more class, you were training Wednesday night, that's, that was an hour and a half, right? You get Saturday on Zoom, that's an hour. We've got another three or four hours to make up. Another four or five hours to make up. So what days this week are we going to feel trained? See, that accountability can come because you're following a schedule yourself. You're following a system yourself, and now you can keep them following that system. You follow me, right? Um, so first question I ask, okay, let's put in your non-negotiables. I kind of, I'm, I'm turning the sheet towards them. I'm also reminding them or encouraging them. It'd be wise for them to get their own planner at this point. You know, hey, grab a planner. We're going to put this in here now, but grab a planner off the depot so you can transfer the stuff over there, right? So, hey, what are your non-negotiables? And I let them talk. What do you have right now? I, I don't want to, like, like you said, you just started with us. You've got a job. You're trying to improve your situation, but obviously you don't want to lose that job. So what's your schedule right now with work? And we'll put in there. Okay, I work. You know, I work right now, Monday through Thursday. I got Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. And every other Sunday I have to work. Okay, cool. Like, so I'll block it out. What, what do you work from? I work from, you know, 8 a.m. To, to 4 p.m. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Work, work, work. And I'll block those times out and I'll put, I'll put work there, right? Uh, what else do you have? Are you married? And yeah, I've got, you know, I'm married. I've got two little ones. Awesome. When do y'all usually spend time together? What's that usually look like? Uh, well, sometimes in the evenings, we usually on Saturday. Awesome. Perfect. Let's put some time in there. I did, again, this might not be your schedule every week, but this is a schedule that we can I want to start giving them to mm -hmm. see that they have enough time. <laughs> yeah. Right? One of the, the biggest objections you get probably is I don't have enough time. That you're, you're recruit thinking that they don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. The thing is, they're actually right. They don't have enough time to do all the crap that they do and build for America. They don't. <laughs> you have to win the battle with them on dropping some of those things and doing Primerica instead. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like what, dropping their family? No, like Netflix. You know what I'm saying? They, like you gotta win the Netflix battle. You gotta win like, they go to the club every Friday night and Saturday night. You gotta win that one over time. Or the next 30, 45 days, you have to win that battle, right? Because the reason that they're at where they're at is they're, they're, they're busy. How many people have y'all met where they are completely free? Like, man, I'm totally free. You know, I got a job and uh, my wife works, but after that, like nothing. I, I mean, I'm wide open. The weekends when I do anything, right? So yeah, just put me to work. You know, I could probably do 45 hours part time. You know, like everybody, everyone's got, every night they've got something. They're super busy, right? Um, so you are proving to them in front of them. It's like doing the budget with the client. It's hard for a client to give you the objection we don't have the money after you just did a budget with them and they got 800 in surplus. Like you kind of took the, I don't have the money objection off the table for them and they did it for you. Same thing you're doing with time with your new recruit. You're trying to take the, I don't have time or we don't have enough time. You're taking that off the table for your next 45, six days of working with them. What we, we did this get, you have enough time. You have plenty of time. You're just not using that time to work. <laughs> You know, how many hours are you logging in on your, your, uh, your TV right now? You know, how much did you make over the last 17 years of doing that? You know, how's your life? You know, like, you set yourself up for that. Am I having these conversations after fast start? No, no. But I am setting myself up to have it. Well, how do you know you have these conversations? I, every single time that a recruit walks in here, I'm going to have these conversations. Every one of these RVPs that we have, we've had these conversations. Every agent I have, I've had these conversations this week with producers <laughs> like it's it's part of it but if i don't think about it, if you don't set up yourself then you don't even know if they do have enough time or not even though you do know but they haven't given you the keys yet right you know so uh anyway all right so they put in there let's say add some other stuff with the church on sunday non-negotiable awesome perfect love that we have the same thing you know put put their time in with that all right what evening times do you want to make sure you keep 
you know, allocated with, with your family or whatever. Yeah, you know what? We we have always have a family dinner on Tuesday and Thursday. All right, awesome. Like, I'm pretty lenient at this point, and I'm, like, giving them as much as they can, right? Unless I start seeing that they have zero time. Like, softball on this day, we got, you know, the kids are in, uh, you know, three different sports, you know, football, basketball, lacrosse, and my, and my daughter swims, and it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, I, I might need to have a conversation here. But most of the time, there's plenty of time. And I just need them to see that. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is probably 60, 70% of the fast start of this page right here. Right. Um, so, okay, perfect. I got that. Awesome. So, so what days do you want to work? What days or evenings do you want to work your primary care business? We need to obviously use at the I2B when I'm hiring somebody, I always say I need about 10 to 12 hours at least to get you started part time. At a minimum. So if they can't commit to that, I probably don't even hire them. So at this point, I'm doing their fast start. They've already committed to me 10, 12, 15 hours part time. Perfect. Well, when would you like they get to schedule their own work? When would you like to put your time in? What does that look like for you? You know, oh well, I guess obviously you got Saturday train. Yep, we got Saturday on Zoom. And then remember we're world class, so we you know live training at seven o'clock on Wednesday, six thirty on Wednesday. So I'll put those times in there. Okay, there's there's three, three and a half, there's four hours. All right, one, the, the other four to six hours, we're going to spend field training. We're going to be spending with families, teaching you how to do the business where you're watching me with a family get help. It's going to be right. Um, time out real quick. Remember, when you're recruiting them and when you're doing the fast start, what, what, do, what does the medical industry do? Like, what, what is, when you, think, when, you, when you think of like the medical industry, Memorial Herman. What do they do? Help, help people that are sick. Yeah. Help people with health, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, somebody's on a bed and there's a doctor or a nurse helping them. And everything else gets paid because of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everything. The machines in there, the nurses, the paperwork people, the janitor people. The people that are coming in to entertain, like everything comes from that interaction when that client's on the bed and they're getting advice or they're getting pills or whatever it is, right? Yeah. If, you, if you're, if you're, uh, uh, I don't know, she, she, Chevron, I, I say she, the word Chevron, what do you think of in Houston? Yes. Gasoline, right? But where does Chevron make money? That's the pump. Mm -hmm. They, that's where they make money. That's where everyone, the engineers, the drillers, the geophysicists, the managers, the big buildings downtown, the oil rigs, it all comes down to, does that make sense? Like everything. You got to get your recruit to understand everything we do comes down to a kitchen table appointment. Everything we do comes down to us and a client on Zoom or on a kitchen table talk about their finances. Mm -hmm. Everything we do. If, if you can accomplish that, that's going to help you because if that's what the one thing your recruit doesn't want to do, why are you with Chevron? Yeah. But here, I want to work with Chevron. I love, I love Chevron. I love math. I just don't want to do anything that has to do with getting oil out of the ground into cars. Um, that... <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. Like this one, hey, I want to be, I've always wanted to help people. I love medical industry. I just don't want to do anything that involves helping somebody that's sick though. But I love helping people. Like you're not in your what? Like, hey, I want to, I want to do this, I want to change my life, I want to make some money part-time. I just don't want to like sit down with families and help them with their finances. Like, what? Like you need to have that as an absurd concept in your mind as the trainer. So that when you're talking, you're not making them look dumb or sound dumb, but when you're talking, you're kind of like, they feel the energy that what they're saying makes no sense whatsoever. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's going to help you move them to setting a point. Like, wait, you don't want to set a point. Like, that's why you're here. Like, so that we can set a point. That's like, you got to build you a market. I got to teach you how to do the business. Why, how, did, how did you plan on? Tell me, like, how did you plan on taking you from where you're at, which is nothing, financially, to 
all of a sudden have a lot of clients and making money and families are getting help with their, their finances. Like, what was your strategy on that? Teach me. If you have to, and then, oh, I don't know, I guess I was going to have you provide all the, all, the, all the numbers for me. You know, it's like, no, that's a job. That's a job. You know, there's some financial companies that have that. You can, you can try to work with one of those. Uh, you just can't make the money that we make. Does that make sense? But that's yeah. a job. I'm trying to teach you how to build a business from scratch. And that's why we're not having you quit your job yet. It's not what it's going to take some time, but you're trusting me with this. Fast starts, you're going to, you're going to go back and forth a little bit. Um, the most important objection to overcome in Primerica is your team, uh, is, your, is the need to get into the field and why. That's the most important and sometimes hardest objection is getting your teammate to understand that they need to get in the field and they understand why they need to get in the field. Yeah. Right? Some people get in the field because they're just coachable. I want them to get in the field not just because they're coachable, but they also know why. They understand, like, I do this, I, I build up my bonus, and I build up my knowledge, and I build up a referral base. I want to do a whole bunch of this. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's not a favor to me. Hey, hey, new recruit that I have, Johnny, like, hey, would you mind? I'm trying to hit my bonus, or I'm trying to hit my – uh, a promotion can you please set up some KP? like uh all right bro i'll set something up for you man you know like they don't understand why maybe they're just doing it because you build a relationship with them that's okay you want to have the most impact from a new recruit is you get them to understand that they need to set up ones and they understand why they need to set up ones does that make sense right so um i let them pick their day all right they say oh, okay you know what monday and we're, i'm going to work monday evening and i'm going to work the afternoon saturday Every week, awesome. Can I? Is that is that for sure? Are you good on that? Well, I mean, for the most, I mean, unless an emergency comes up, or yeah, I totally understand. I'm I'm good with that. I'm just saying, every week, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna block out my schedule. When they see me open up my schedule, they go, oh crap, he's serious about doing like I'm gonna put on there Monday. Me and Johnny are in the field Monday, you know, and he doesn't know that Sue. I did the same thing for Sue about Monday. And Bob about Monday and Rachel about Monday. Like, does that make sense? There's like four or five people I might be yeah. committed to train. Are all those people going to put me in the field every Monday? No. And if they do, come on. Josh, I've got a KT for you. Christy, hey, help me out. I've got a KT for you. You know, like we have no problem with trainers. Would you agree? The, the, the thing that we, to explode your business is you need enough appointments going on, right? And that's where this comes from. Okay. So, um, so Monday and Saturday afternoon, I'll put that in my calendar. And now I know on Sunday, because I follow the system and I'm calling all my team about to get on my call, my RVP Sunday night call. Right? So I'm calling everyone of my teammates, touch and base, right? Hey, remember tomorrow night we're going to the field, Johnny. I'm excited, man. Looking forward to it. Uh, so what do you have set so far? And what's Johnny going to say? Uh, nothing at all. I haven't done anything. At all. Uh, no worries. No worries. If you're totally good, man. Hey, it's Sunday, great time to make calls. Sunday, right? People are home. Hey, I'm gonna give you a call in about an hour. Remember tonight's the the uh, the uh, team call. I'll give you a call in about an hour once you work on set some of those up. Or hey, let's jump on a Zoom call. We can do that right now together. Or we, we fill in the blank. However you want to do it. But John needs to know, like he said, Monday he's in the field. You scheduled that time, and you're keeping him accountable to setting those points up, right? Most people don't do this, like I said, reiterate, because they're not putting themselves on a strict schedule either, right? So a lot of recruits they have come in, they just fly right through the cracks, right through the cracks. If you do this, it doesn't mean every recruit you have is all of a sudden going to be productive, but if you do this, you're going to have the right people see your seriousness about the business and see that it's changing your financial situation, changing your life, and they're going to start trusting you with theirs. Does that make sense? It starts with that accountability, right? Um, questions on this? Almost like I said, I probably stop stop after this slide because this is the most important part, right? Um, okay, so after I've got that field training time in, boom, we've asked those questions. I'm going to go to the goals. All right, we're going to we're going to get into goals. So I've got the time that they're going to work. Let's talk about some goals. And, uh, you know, I, I just jump in. Hey, I love talking about goals. Hey, when was the last time that you wrote your goals out? Goals? I, no, I don't think I heard. Oh, that's all right. No, that's right. How many people have you met that have their goals already read? Right? You even probably have our time with them, even though it's spit out their own goals, right? You're kind of like having to teach them 
how to set goals, right? Totally fine. <clears throat> I, I, I have the same thing. I didn't have any goals when I came to this. I had to be taught on how to set goals. Some people need permission from you that they can have goals. Because of their upbringing or whatever it may be, they thought life was about other people tell me what to do and I do it. I was like, oh, I think that's called sl slavery, actually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But people, like, literally, a large portion of our population walk around thinking their parents, their husband, their wife, their boss, like, literally tells me what to do every day, and I do it. Right? Large population. And that's contrary to an entrepreneur. That's what, that's the whole idea is you got to break the spell on that. You got to say, hey, no, let me. and this is where you start to do that. Is this the only time you're ever going to talk about their goals with them? No. But this is the first time. All right? So you're, you're, you're going to dive in hey so what's what are the goals that you have and i have some picked out because everyone has these goals that i can help lead them to right does anybody know what, what are some basic ones that they should probably have for life traveling house, Travel and house income, income getting out of debt right so finances debt student loans uh credit debt car payment getting out of debt is, is a great great motivator right and should they do that Yes. Do they want to do that? Yeah. So you help them get to that point. And I would even try to figure out how much they have. Yeah. How much debt do you have? A great fast start, by the way, if you're doing it in the right market, almost all the time leads to a client. Yeah. <laughs> right? The goals, you start talking about goals with them, talk about financial goals, and you're going to set up one that's here in a second, and they have a spouse. Game over. That's like easy. Yeah. Easy. That, that they would do the plan. You know what I mean? Um, another financial goal might be, or another personal goal might be moving out. A lot of, of people that we recruit are young. I was one of them, right? 18 years old when I started, I lived with my parents. I wanted to move out, right? And I had a great upbringing, great experience, loved my parents. Um, but I got to a point, I literally remember sitting at, some of you know the story, like I was sitting down at the table, it was me and my dad, we were having breakfast. And I don't know why this day was different, but I woke up, my mom was cooking dinner, and she was serving, or, or I can't remember, breakfast or dinner. She was serving both of us dinner. He's eating, and I'm eating. And mom was, mom was making the dinner and serving it. And I remember being like, what am I doing in this man's house with his wife serving me dinner? Like, what am I doing? I know. It was my mom. Totally fine. Right? Love her to death. He didn't say anything. I don't know. Just one day was fine yesterday and then today it was like starting to rub me weird like the like kind of grow up a little bit you know what i mean i don't know that just for me that's what happened right so you want to help you want to help your new i bet they're already thinking that and it might be because their mom and dad are like get the heck out of here or whatever you know or like you know whatever whatever it is i bet that's in the scope of something that they want to accomplish right getting out of their house right so you know, ask them about that, talk to them about that. Make sure you're asking them the, that to the right person, you know. You know, <laughs> they're 34 and married, don't ask if they want to move out, you know. <laughs> Might not be a good question, right? So, uh, just make sure you're all away. Uh, another financial goal, I like to ask people how much, how much have you had saved before? You, you like saving money? Like, no, I don't want to save any money. I want to have zero. I love no margin in my life. Mm -hmm. I live in one, one financial crisis to the next. Life is just awesome, right? It's great on my health, too. You know, right? Everyone wants to save money, right? How much is the most you've ever had saved? Because I got a great number for anybody. It's the number right above what they've ever had before. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, one time, Andy, I had 5000 bucks or $80,000. <clears throat> Twelve thousand. I don't care what the number is. It's just whatever they've had the most money for at one point in their life. I go, okay, so ten grand, really? Well, how did you get that money? Well, you know, this and that settlement, or, or you know, I had a big commission check, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. And you had ten. Yeah. So what? So what would you do with it? Well, and then you hear the story about what they did wrong with that, right? Oh, that's all right. Yeah. So how did you feel when you had it though? Oh, it's great. Every time they like go back to like a little utopia moment. Oh, when I had that two thousand three hundred dollars, it was like, oh, I just had so much margin. I felt good. I felt like I have like was on top of things. Like all these positive, great feelings are what they're telling you that they have, right? And then you say, awesome. We're gonna say three thousand dollars, and I'll put up there three thousand. 
How would you feel when we, if I can get this done for you in the next 60 days? How would you feel? Oh, that would be awesome. Do you see how I'm taking candy from a baby now? Like, this is easy. This is easy. And it's fair game. Am I manipulating this person? No. I'm just actually showing them they can have what they want. And Primerica can give it to them. Most people that are doing a fast start, the problem they have is they have the right answer, right? They're just not giving the right answer in the format that that person's, the question that that person's asking. Does that make sense? Right? Birds eat worms, not ice cream, right? You give a bird a worm, they're freaking pumped. You give me a worm, I'm disgusted. Does that make sense? You put a big thing of ice cream in a bird's nest, they're probably a little pissed off. Right? You might kill the baby, you know what I'm saying? You put a big thing of ice cream in my bowl, I love you, right? <laughs> dumb, but as a Tom Hopkins says, so dumb. Yeah. But how many times do we mess that up? Not what you want. What do they want? Right? What if I started talking about that person that had twenty three hundred saved? What if I said you can have Carlos has one hundred and fifty grand saved? You know, Zara has two hundred grand saved. What if I can help you get hundred grand saved over the next three years? Like you're in outer space. Yeah. You're. You know, is that what you're gonna be like? Oh, awesome. Yeah, think big, think big, or don't think at all. You know, like, um, like <laughs> you're missing the point of this, but you're about to, you're gonna miss this person, right? This person needs three grand. Yeah, yeah. they need to three grand save, and that's where you're gonna be able to catch that person, yeah. right? Uh, so, I think y'all get the drift of the questions you kind of want to ask, and when you get the goal, dive in a little bit on it. Get them emotionally attached to this goal. Get them living this goal as if they're in it. Hey, what's the most money you've ever made? Oh, one month, I made. Four thousand dollars. Oh man, that's how do you feel about that? You put up their income, monthly income. It was awesome. I loved it. I used to have a job and I got some overtime one month and they were working me crazy. But I remember making five grand that month. It was awesome. I mean, 10 grand, 15, whatever. It doesn't matter the amount. It matters that it was their biggest month. Right? And you'd be surprised, you're like, people don't track their income. Everybody tracks their income. Those of you that do F and A's, hey, what's your uh, what's your gross income? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, what do you take home? Oh, three thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars and seventeen cents every first. I'm like, oh, okay. Like they know that number to a T. <laughs> That's what pays the bills. They know that number, right? So they're going to know the number that they've made before, and what should be their goal? Make that again, <laughs> right? Hey, if I can show you how to make this income part time, or if I can show you how to work part time with me along with your job and make this income consistently. How would you feel about that? Be awesome. Be great. Right? Again, this page is like 80, 90% of a good fast start is done right here in this page. If you spend time and you set it up properly, when you get to setting appointments, you have something to reference back to. Does that make sense? All right. So let's let's move on, Christina. So this is where you're going to talk about how production is counted. You're going to go through overrides. I'm fine with you spending time uh, uh, going through this fairly quickly. Just take, teaching them the compensation. 80, 90% of your job is done. You finished schedule and the goals. 80, 90% of your job is done. So you're teaching them some things, giving them some little bit of value, teach about our compensation here. I like to get them to understand two things on this page. I can spend two to three hours of work and make a check. 300, 500, whatever it is. Two to three hours of work and I can Check. I want them to understand that, and I might ask them, "Hey, how long does it make? To, how long does it take you to make uh, four hundred and fifty dollars at your job right now?" Uh, it takes all week. What if I could teach you to do that in two to three hours? That'd be awesome. So, small amount of hour. That thing hit me in the overview when they said you can spend two to three hours and make about five hundred dollars. I was like, "Whoa, whoa!" All right, hold on, time out. What what do we do here again? Like, you know, I was like. That's all I wanted to hear because I owed my mom $500. And I thought, I'm going to be completely free of my mom's death <laughs> three hours from when I get started in this company. Like, this is awesome. You know what I mean? That hit me like a ton of I can't tell you another thing that was said in the overview that I remember. Zero. I was just sweating and scared that they're going to find out that I don't know how to spell. Like, that was it. Like, and then one to three, three to two to three hours, make five hours. Like, oh. I'm in. I'm in. I'll do one of those a month. I'm in. You know, uh, that was it. Don't forget what blew your butt out of the water, whatever it was. I get more. I mean, I made, you know, like forty grand this month. I was more pumped about that. <laughs> Two, three hours, made five hundred. You know what I mean? It's just what it is, right? 
And then the second thing I want people to understand is the override. And I even share with them the story of my first override. Maybe you have one similar where you go, wow, you're not there. You get <coughs> do it until they get it. Like, you're not there because you built a team. You got paid. Like, oh, okay. No. You're not there. Like, you're on vacation. And one, of, one of your agents helps a family. You get paid. Wait, so I have to be there? Yes, yes, you got it. Like, do it until they get it, right? Because when you're about to, to tell them, hey, uh, give, me, give me a chance, give me some overtime call, what do you want to reference back to? Mm -hmm. Remember, we built a team for you. You know, we got to get you trained, right? You, you can reference back to that. So, those are the two things you want to make sure to hit on this page along with going over everything. Uh, next uh, page, uh, 8531 cycle. I love the 8531 cycle. I want to basically find the income and the goals. Remember the goals? Yeah. Remember the income that they needed to make? Three grand, five grand, two, whatever it was. And then I'm going to find that number on this chart. Simple as that. And I'm going to start to connect their goals to Primerica that they can get their goals here in the next four, five, six months if they follow my system, right? So district leader right here, they said they wanted to make three grand a month. I say, all we have to do is what's that say six six kts a week you got to be on six appointments a week so it says nine yeah it's three six nine twelve six, six, six kts a week two right. four six right yeah okay so six oh, kts sorry. a week i can be on six kts a week that's it we said we we're going to work on monday we can do two kts there we said we're going to work on saturday we can do two kts there it's kind of blurry but <laughs> i couldn't see it so, oh, I was um, looking in the bottom. It's nine thousand in premium. <laughs> Can you see it now? Nine thousand in premium. I see it. Six, Thank eight. you, Christina. <laughs> um, but but again, maybe I, I'm not. Are they going to do six KTs next week with me? No. But I'm connecting the dots of belief. He said I can make three grand a month, and I got to get to that district thing, that sprint district thing. Okay, that's that must be important to get there because then. I start doing six appointments a week, I'm gonna make the same as my job, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that income to my job. Okay. Well, how do we get how do we do these bonus things? You see the direction that I'm leading them, not to not setting appointments. I'm leading them to if you don't set appointments, you're crazy. <laughs> you're absolutely crazy. You work at Chevron, try not to sell gas, right? You work in the medical industry, and you don't want to help people with their health. <laughs> like you're crazy, right? So, okay, next slide. But I don't tell them they're crazy, right? You're, again, you're leading them down a the path. Talk to them about the bonus. At this point, this should be a no-brainer. It's like icing on the cake. You should be able to do a successful fast start planner without even talking about the bonus. But having the bonus is like a no-brainer. No, it's a no-brainer. Sabino and I and Jessica had dinner the other night where we were talking about recruiting an old agent that used to work with us. All he said was, bro, they got a fast start bonus now. He's like, what? Yeah. You train your guy and they can get a, a bonus. Oh, well, how much? As much as they want. What? There's no cap on it? You know what I mean? Like, it's a no brainer that you can tell somebody. Well, I had to tell somebody, and when he gets you in the field to get trained, why? So you can get trained. I can build your list. And now you can tell somebody, when you get you in the field and get trained to build your list, but you also can make 1502 grand. What? <laughs> it's amazing, right? Is it amazing to you in front of them, though? Is it amazing to you? Are you, do you believe in that, right? Okay. And then uh, next slide, Jim. So I'm going to pull this sheet out and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. And this is the transition. I want to spend just a couple minutes and we'll wrap up. This is the big transition, right? It's not really that big, but it makes or breaks your successful faster. Right? Have you ever done a faster? I'm in this boat. <laughs> or I walk out of the room and I go, they are pumped up. And so am I. And your leader goes, hey, how'd it go? You know, awesome. <laughs> I mean, awesome. I'm so pumped. And they are too. <laughs> We're going to go have lunch. I'm so pumped. And they are too. <laughs> you look awesome. What? So how many KTs you said? We didn't set any. <laughs> but it was awesome. You know, your leader's like, yay. <laughs> you know, like, but that's, that's the key to having a good fast start is, yes, you got them pumped because Primerica is awesome. <laughs> You should be pumped. I get pumped when I do one too. But then you have to take action with them and you have to start setting appointments. 
right? Oh, they promised me that we're going to do that later. Oh, they told me that right after I got finished paying their lunch that they were going to do that. Oh, they promised tonight on Zoom. Oh, they, like, like I don't care what you say. You did not have a good fast start, right? You know, no, you're just being negative. No, I'm positive. You did not get it. All right, 100% positive. That was not a good fast start. All right. Does everyone get the funny part of that? It's so true. You have got to spend time filling out their list here. And just tell them, hey, this is what we're going to do next. And you've probably been leading them up to this point this whole time. Planting seeds. Hey, we're going to be building a team for you. That's what you opened up with. We're going to be uh, building a referral base for you. Hey, when we get in the field, hey, you're going to shadow me. Hey, like you've been saying all these things. So you don't want to get to a point where you're, hey, we're going to get in the field. And they go, what? Wait, what? Like, no, it shouldn't be that. You should have dropped these little... Yep. these little nuggets kind of along the whole day or this whole hour we spent together or 45 minutes and now we go hey we're going to go ahead and put your list together all right so grab your phone real quick and we're going to start building up a list this is the most important thing that we do today all right so grab your phone weak people need to be told what to do strong people want to be told what to do so grab not not hey so what we're going to do here <laughs> you know like what are you nervous about what are you they need it. you want they need you, not you need them. Men's mindset. Hey, get your get your phone out. We need to make a list A to Z. And then we're going to categorize this list and then we're going to figure out who the best people would be to help. Um, I don't know if this guy'd be interested. No, probably not. But we need to put him down here. All right. Well, this person does I I agree. Totally agree about that. Put him, let's put them down, Bob. We need to put everybody down. All right. And then after like three or four. Then they're like, okay, so you want everybody? And I'm like, yeah, I want everybody. Like, okay, I'll just put everybody in there. You want everybody? I'll just put everybody. I'm like, thank God you finally figured it out. That's what we're going to be doing today. We're not leaving here until we do it. Right? It's going to take some time. You want them to write it out, put it out there. If you can get it where it's printed off, I love that. I think that's quick too. But you want to have names and numbers. If you print it off from their phone, then you want to take time with them to qualify. Hey, who's four or five point? You don't have to rewrite it on this sheet, but you want you do want to have those notes on it. Who's a four or five one? Where's your family? Where's your uncle? Where's your, where's your parents? Right? Who's your best friend? Who's your best friend's parents? You, you want to have all that information on there. And it might that might take you, I don't know, that might take you 15, 20 minutes just to get all that written down. And then you want to find who are the top low-hanging fruit. Low-hanging fruit. You know what I mean by that? Everybody understand that kind of low hanging fruit? Like if you got an apple tree, there might be a nice apple up there, but what's the price to get up the tree and get that apple right versus the apple that's right hanging here? You can grab it. You want to get in front of the low hanging fruit quick. Low hanging fruit, parents, right? Uh, best friends, parents, uh, my sister, my, or my brother in law. Like easy, easy, great credibility. My coach, we got a good relationship. I still talk to him to this day. Like easy fruit. Right, there's probably four, three, four of those that are easy, and you want to get those scheduled this week. That's what you want. Credibility there, results are there. Results breed confidence in your new recruit to set more. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't. I, it's so powerful when you get that person to feel quick, and they see a good client. They don't like, hey, I've got all these people, but let's sit down with with Joe. Who's Joe? Like, eh, Joe's like, kind of, he's a little off, you know, he's not out of job, but he's been three and a half points. I think he's on his third marriage. You know, so you're like, I don't want to see Joe. No, no, no. Like, I don't want to see Joe. I want to see your mom and dad tomorrow night. You know, I want to see your best friend's parents, right? Help them to see that. It's not just, oh, you're just trying to make money in their market. No, I'm not trying to make money. In I am trying to make money in their market. I'm trying to get them to see Primerica works. And if I show them a whole bunch of appointments with Joe, right, they're going to see Primerica's tough. And I'm the one who created that environment. For them. They're going to see Primerica's hard. Like trying to convince broke people to do rich people habits is really hard. Trying to convince people that already kind of have the food, have some money, already committed in life in certain areas. You know why we pick four and five pointers? Because those prove that they're committed in life in certain areas already. So getting them to commit in their financial area wouldn't be hard to do, or they're already doing it. It's really smooth. Life is nice in a five-point market, right? You, 
you get into an off market, lower income, not married or, or not, not in a home. A home is a commitment. Would you agree? That's why it's one of those things. They committed something. They bought real estate. Like they're committed in their life. They got kids. They're taking care of kids. They see the need. It's, it's night and day. So if you do that right, you're going to have not every time you're going to set 12 cases. Love that. I want that. I'm telling them they need to do that. But you're going to have three or four great appointments set yeah. after a good fast start. Three, four, or five great appointments set. And you're going to go on one or two or three really good appointments and close at least two of them that first week. How many recruits do you have when they close two pieces of business their first week? Quit the second week. Mm-hmm. Quit the third week. No. Mm-hmm. There, I just lock nut, nut it in at least for another two, three weeks. Mm-hmm. At least a month. How many people do you have on your team that are, they, that you know they're going to stay at least another month? You get, oh, that's what the bonus is about. You get recruits on your bed. They see that there's a teammate on there. I know that teammate might take off. There's a guy that, that I recruited that got licensed before me. Heck no, I wasn't going to quit. He was direct to me at this point. I mean, uh, leveled me out. I want to get him back. Mm-hmm. That was a motivating factor for me, right? How many people do you have that you're getting a recruit for or getting a sale for or getting them to closer to their bonus or getting their bonus? That's how you lock people in. That's how you get them committed to stay. Does that make sense, right? You're fighting against a massive, well, I don't want to use people here, but you're fighting against a massive problem with humans is that they quit everything. Most people quit everything. And you're you're and it's stacked against you. It's not you, it's not America, it's not even them as an individual, it's just the human race. Everything that they try, they quit. Yeah. And it's stacked against you. So, yes, do I have to kind of string them along and give them another another win here, another win here until they plant their flag, right? How long does it take for somebody to plant their flag? No one knows. Some people plant their flag, call us temple, like the first day. I don't know, maybe if I met two, uh, $2 million Bill Whittle, I'm going to play to my flag the first day too. You know what I'm saying, right? But some people play the first day. Some people take six to eight months to plant the flag. Some people takes a year. Some people takes four or five months. I would say average, probably somewhere between three and six months is where you're going to get somebody two to four months, three to six months, where you're going to get an opportunity for somebody to go, this is it. I want to yeah. this. Fast start, uh, sprint bonus, district. That's the first step to that process, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, any any uh, thoughts? Any questions? Everybody fired up? Oh, oh, pumped up? Oh, Let's go take some action with our pumped upness right now. Hopefully, uh, you got a lot out of that Zoom. And uh, I'm going to bring to the front Mr. Carlos Sandoval. Oh,